Hello everyone, my name is Elsa. I am a visual designer and Adobe XD ambassador. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I achieved this really cool light mode, dark mode masking effect. So feel free to follow along and hopefully you can learn how to accomplish the same effect and use it for your own design purposes as well. So right now I've already opened my window, Adobe XD window, and I have an artboard set up. It's 1080 by 1080, but obviously you can use whatever size that you want. And I've already placed the light mode version of my app screen in the artboard. Obviously the app design isn't part of the tutorial, but feel free to use whatever app concept you already have or create one if you'd like to use for the sake of this tutorial. So now I'm going to simply duplicate this image. The shortcut for duplicate in Adobe XD is Command D. And as you can see, that gives us another image placed directly on top. And I'm going to go into my Finder window and locate the dark mode version of this app screen and place that on top. So as you can see, now we have our light mode screen behind if I had the, if I hide this layer and then we have our dark mode screen on top. So I'm just going to rename this just so there's no confusion moving forward. Awesome. So now what we wanna do is mask the dark mode screen. And this is how we're going to accomplish that. So using the ellipse tool, the shortcut is E, or you can go over here and click the circle icon. We're going to draw a circle on our artboard. I think roughly here is okay. And I'm going to remove the border. I don't want a border, just the fill color. And that's the shape that we're going to use for our actual mask. But before I mask the picture, I'm going to duplicate the circle. So keeping in mind, once again, the shortcut for duplicate is Command D. And for my second circle, I'm going to remove the fill color and add a border instead. And I'm going to set my border to appear as an outer stroke. So we don't want it to appear within the circle, but outside of the circle. I'm going to set the size to, let's say 20. Yep, 20 is not so bad. And I'm going to simply decrease the size of it slightly. So it's not right at the edge of the circle we have below this white one, but covers it a bit. So, yep, I think that should be fine. I wonder if I should increase it to like maybe 25. No, I think 20 is okay. So now we're going to take the original circle that we drew. I might want to rename it though, just to avoid confusion later on. We don't want to have too many ellipses and be wondering what they're all for. I'm going to name this circle mask because that's the circle we're going to use for the mask. So I'll simply select that circle and then select the image I want to mask, which is a dark mode image and go to object mask with shape or you can see the shortcut for that is shift command M on a Mac. So done. The image that we've chosen has been masked. So it only appears within the shape that we drew, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm going to take the second circle that I drew with the border and I'm going to change the border color to white, which works perfectly. And now I'm going to actually duplicate the circle once more. So now we have ellipse three. I'm going to rename this um, white border circle. Exactly that. <laughs> the names don't necessarily have to be too complicated. And then in terms of the circle that we've duplicated, we're gonna adjust that slightly. So I'm gonna change the color to black and I'm going to reduce the size to let's say five. And I'm going to, sorry, reduce the border size, but I'm gonna enlarge it so that it's appears sort of in the middle of this border circle. So I might make it actually six. That looks good. And now what we want is to achieve that dash effect that you saw in um, the sample I showed at the start of the video. So in order to do that, we simply just have to increase the dash value here. And as you can see, that changes our borders so that it appears that it has dashes rather than um, a constant border line if that makes sense. So that's kind of what we want just for, or maybe I should increase it. Yep, that looks pretty good. Now I want the corners to be rounded, or rather the edges to be rounded instead of straight. And in order to get that, you simply go here and you select this rounded cap. Done. So now we can see that our caps are rounded, which is exactly what we wanted. So yep, that's awesome. So now, if you remember from the sample I showed earlier, the dashes 
weren't actually solid color black. It was almost like they were cutouts from the white border so you could see what was underneath these sections, if that makes sense. It might make more sense once I actually show it, but that's the effect I want to achieve once again. So going back to our circles, I'm going to rename this one dashes just again for clarity and I'm going to turn them all and outline the stroke. Outline stroke basically converts it so before it was a shape so a circle with a border but now it's a shape with a fill color and the reason why we do this is that it then enables us to select sh different shapes together and perform these different um, path option so add if we wanted to combine them or subtract which is actually the one we want to do as you can see here it cuts out the layer on top from the layer below so you can see through these sections here which is exactly what i wanted so yeah in order to achieve that effect you do have to convert um your shape and you have to outline the stroke of your shape so just bear that in mind as well the other good thing about outlining the stroke is that when you do resize um, your shape so when you enlarge it or you shrink it the border size isn't going to change so with our white border circle if you remember previously we had set it to 20 if you were to enlarge that or shrink it the border size would actually adjust um, depending on whether you're enlarging it or shrinking it but if you don't want that to happen if you want it to remain the same thickness regardless of what size it is you once again do have to outline the stroke so these are just tips to keep in mind when all else fails simply go to object path <laughs> outline stroke and it should fix most of your problems so this is awesome this is the effects that we wanted for it to appear as if these particular sections have been cut out from our shape below but now i want it to be so that through these shapes, instead of seeing the light mode image, I want to be able to see the dark mode image. So in order to do that, we're gonna go into our mask group. You simply open the mask group by clicking this icon here. And I'm gonna select circle mask. As you can see, it'll then preview to show us the dark mode image that we've masked um, and the shape that we drew as our mask. And I'm going to simply take that circle shape and enlarge it so that it covers the dashes that we had created earlier. Now when I exit, you can see that through these cutout dash shapes, we can see the dark mode version of the image instead of the light mode version. And I just think that that's kind of like a cool effect. So obviously you don't have to do this. You can go with whatever aesthetic decisions that you'd like. But um, for me personally, this is kind of the effect that I wanted. So awesome. And that's it for our first artboard. We're gonna make two more artboards and in both of them, we're simply going to change the location of the mask, enlarge it, um, just to create more of a dynamic effect. So in our second artboard, something to keep in mind, it might be tempting to select both the mask group and the subtraction. So the subtraction is simply um, our white border and the dashes that have been cut out from it and drag them to the new location you want. But the problem is by doing that, you are also moving the image that's been masked. So if I open my mask group, you'll see that my image has been moved as well, which is not what we want. So first you want to actually move your subtraction to its new location and then enlarge it accordingly. So I think this size may be a bit larger, slightly larger. Yep, this size is good. And I also wanted to create this kind of rotating type effect. So in order to do that, I'll also go into my subtraction and click the dashes specifically and rotate those. The reason why I rotate the dashes specifically as opposed to just selecting the entire element and rotating that is because if you do rotate the entire element and you auto animate when we go into prototype, sometimes it can look a bit wonky. So I found that it's just easier to simply go into your shape and select the dashes to rotate. And the effect will remain the same regardless. It'll seem like it's rotating. So here I'm just going to rotate it slightly. It doesn't have to look too perfect, but yeah, 122. You can also choose to rotate by simply inputting your rotate value here. Totally up to you. And then now I'm going to go into my mask group, select circle mask, so the shape, and drag that. Oops. 
you want to make sure that you're dragging it right at the edge otherwise the entire shape will move so i'm going to drag that and enlarge it this way my dark mode shape isn't moving and rather it's just a mask so once again i'm just going to enlarge it so that you can see the dark mode version of the image through the dashes that it doesn't have to be perfect because at the end of the day you can only see the dark mode um, within this inner circle here and through the dashes so don't worry about making it align perfectly to the white border circle um, doesn't necessarily have to be like that and yep and that's the effect that we want so we're gonna do it one more time this time it's going to be our final circle that's supposed to show the entire app screen in dark mode in the sample i showed i did four layers or rather four artboards i believe totally up to you what you want to do um, you can do as many or as few as you want uh, for the sake of just the showing a tutorial i believe three is enough so once again, we've enlarged our outer shape, the subtraction, and now we're going to enlarge the mask just to make sure that it is right on top. Okay, so obviously here it's hard to see if the mask covers the outer dashes, but when we prototype, you will be able to tell um, based on the animation if it's been set correctly or if you still need to make adjustments. So we'll definitely double check that later on. Once again, not forgetting that I do want the dashes to rotate. So I'm going to simply rotate those. Yep. Awesome. Now we're going to create one more artboard, put it here. And in this one, we are going to shrink our subtraction. Oops, see, I almost made the mistake that I told you guys not to make. I was going to select my entire mask group. Let's start with our subtraction. We're going to shrink this so that it almost appears invisible. Reason being that we want to... Oops, Interesting. I will leave that there. And then we have our mask group. We are going to shrink our circle mask as well just so it appears tiny 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 same with our subtraction we want it to appear really small practically invisible so obviously it's not totally invisible but it is pretty much unlikely that someone will notice it um, in whatever demonstration you're creating and that's the purpose just to make it as small as possible that you pretty much can't see it awesome so now our artboards are all set up and we can begin prototyping so we're going to go into prototype mode which is located on this tab select our first artboard and drag this arrow to our second and then we're going to simply adjust the animation settings that we want so i want my trigger to be keys and gamepad that's the one i typically use because i when you select tap, you have to actually tap on the screen to initiate the interaction and that shows the actual cursor. So to avoid that from happening, I use keys and gamepad a lot because that simply lets me initiate the interaction or initiate the animation using um, a key on my keyboard, which is what I prefer. And then action type would be auto animate we already set our destination and then easing for my first one i want to set it to snap just so it has that like bounce type effect and duration i'll set it to 1.5 so as always it's good to kind of test out your animations with each artboard so we're going to test this out awesome 
That is exactly what we wanted. So now we can go ahead and link the rest of our artboards. So in this particular case, rather than snap, I'm going to choose ease in and out. So once again, just testing it out. Oops, I forgot, of course, with keys and gamepad, you do have to set what the trigger is each time. So just keep in mind to do that. Awesome. And then for our last one, we'll do that. And then now to test it from the third artboard because we didn't actually preview it. Awesome. So it works exactly as we'd want it to. So let's just loop it back from the beginning to test it out. So from our first artboard to our second to our third and back to the beginning. Great. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that you learned how to achieve this really cool masking effect. If there's anything else that you'd like me to create a tutorial on, if you have ideas of concepts you want me to try out, feel free to let me know in the comments. And of course, if you have any questions regarding this particular tutorial or need help in any way, obviously let me know in the comments, reach out to me on any of my social media, and I would be happy to help. But yeah, until our next tutorial, thank you for watching. Thank you.